These are the clergy announcements for Trinity Tulsa. This Sunday is Easter. Join us for services at 6, 8, 9, 11, and 11.05 for Church Down Under. There will be flowering of the cross and Eucharist in Church Down Under at 11.05. Make sure to pick up your bedding plans at the southwest door on your way out of the church today. If you attend the 11 a.m. service, please take a lily from the high altar with you home. On April 16th, join us for the dedication of the Nichols Great Hall after the 11 a.m. service. Sign up now for the Suicide Prevention Training with the Mental Health Association, which will take place on April 23rd at 1215. See you on Easter.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a one-year-old male. You may not take it from, or you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Please join me in Psalm 116, which we will read responsively by whole verse. I am the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Shall I pay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. 
I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Please be seated. On the roller coaster that is Holy Week, our car is now at the bottom of the track where the coaster makes a hard right turn and you find yourself jostled and unsettled and maybe just a little bit nervous. I hope you're still buckled in because the ride's going to be bumpy. Maundy Thursday, not Monday or Monday Thursday, comes from the word mandate, to mandate, to command. This day celebrates the servant ministry of Jesus Christ and commands that we do the same, that we serve others. In order to be with Jesus, we must be like Jesus, and Jesus commands us to love each other. At the Last Supper, Jesus broke bread with his friends, reminding them that this is his body broken for them. Then he shared the cup, the new covenant in my blood, he said. The disciples must have been feeling frantic right about then. They had all been on this journey with him over the past few years. They knew the miracles that Jesus had performed. He told them they would also do these same miracles in the name of God. But somehow how it feels different now. Jesus' words seem more urgent. Now that Jesus loves us, reminds us to love each other is interesting, especially right now during this part of what we call Holy Week. As this week has progressed from the raising of Lazarus and Mary putting on expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and Judas chastising them, to Jesus entering Jerusalem as a king and the Pharisees declaring that he must be killed. The religious rulers did not like Jesus and his disciples might just have started having some doubts. Jesus is right in the middle of his disciples not loving him. One of his disciples has betrayed him. He knows it and he knows who. Peter, John, and James, the three that Jesus had with him on his transfiguration on the mountain, are all too tired to stay up and pray with him. Jesus is scared. He understands what the prophets have said, and he knows what it means and what he needs to do to fulfill prophecy. But the human part of Jesus still has to wonder if this is really the right thing to do. In one of his prayers, he attempts to bargain with God. Come on, God, take this away from me. I've changed my mind. 
I don't think I'm strong enough. I feel alone. My friends have all deserted me. Please. We know that he changed his mind. This is the passion of our Lord Jesus, walking through his fear to something on the other side of that fear. At the reaffirmation of our ordination vows last Monday, Bishop Polson spoke to the small ways that we continually betray Jesus today. Although we probably don't need to fear for our lives proclaiming the gospel, we often aren't willing even to be the hands and feet of Christ in this world. When I see that person on the exit ramp with a sign, God bless you, I'm homeless, I'm hungry, please help me, I refuse to make eye contact because I have already judged them to be dishonest. And that's not role modeling Christ-like behavior. Bishop Polson went on to say that the evil one is always trying to find a way into our lives. And sometimes it seems so innocuous, maybe sleeping in rather than going to church, maybe getting too much change and keeping it, maybe forgetting to pay something and walking out of the store and then not walking back. Maybe hearing someone that you know gossiping about someone else and you don't say anything. Sometimes even our being honest with someone can be done in a cruel and non-Christian manner. Our pride and the evil one can convince us that we are right, so they should just suck it up, buttercup, and move on. That sanctimonious moment, ah, I know it well. Being manipulated by the evil one doesn't require that you kill someone, only that you bruise your conscience. I want to segue into the foot washing that we do tonight. Jesus did this for his disciples. Washing feet wasn't uncommon during Jesus' time. The servants, however, would be the ones to do the washing, not the head of the house. Foot washing was a lowly job, not too much status associated with it. People wore their sandals out when they walked, and their feet would naturally be dirty and probably calloused, so cleaning them to go into the house as a visitor was actually pretty typical. But for Jesus to do it, that was unheard of and uncomfortable. As I said before, when preaching at Monday, Thursday, the children generally really enjoy this service. They get to take their socks and shoes off during church and walk around barefoot. I don't think we start feeling self-conscious until early childhood, or excuse me, early adulthood. Then our insecurities come out. Then we wonder, how will our feet look and feel? What will the priest think about my feet and therefore me? As a side note, it's really easy for a priest to do foot washing. It is really difficult as a priest to get my feet washed. I've been thinking for the past couple of weeks that I need to get a pedi, a pedicure, before Easter. And the more I thought about it, I realized that my reasons didn't have to do with Easter, but with today. Sure, I want my feet to look pretty on Easter Sunday, but I wanted them to look their best today so that when Father Lee or whomever washes my feet, they will marvel at how soft and beautiful my feet are. <laughs> I swallowed my pride and did not get my feet done. My nails are jagged, the skin on my heels is probably cracked. I am barefoot right now, so they're probably dirty. But this is me, warts and all. Well, not really warts, but this is me imperfect and insecure and trusting enough in this process to risk my pride to show Jesus and you by stepping outside of my comfort zone that I am willing even when it's uncomfortable, especially when I feel awkward and afraid. That is walking just a small part of the passion, doing what is uncomfortable and awkward and scary because Jesus did it first. Amen. The Lord Jesus, after he supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done for you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you.
by this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. You're invited to come forward. There are two stations. There's one here, a little bit raised for people who might have a problem kneeling. Uh, you can just bend over. Um, there's a station here. There are two chairs up here so that as you come forward, if the chair is occupied, to please sit, take off your shoes and your socks. Same thing here. There are, there are chairs as well. Um, so I invite you to come forward at this time um, as the Holy Spirit leads.
With all of our heart and with all of our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Polson, our own bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, including Barbara, Vivian, Jackie, Siren, Leslie, David, Polly, Belinda, Finley, Joe, Nancy, Lisa, Susan, Neil, Marie, Ray, Sunna, Bob, Kimmy, Beth, Sharon, Jeremy, Delin, Mandy, Mary, Marlene, victims of violence, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Let us pray for the needs, for our needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. We give thanks for all who are worshiping with us today, especially for those worshiping with us for the first time. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him, that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
have a seat for just a few moments. So glad that you're with us tonight. The Tritium starts tonight. Obviously, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then into Easter. Um, we have a number of services you can participate in. This one tonight, two tomorrow at noon and at 7. So come and join us. Uh, the one at noon, the choir will sing the gospel. Uh, so come and join us for that. Uh, there will be a slight sermon, a slight homily by me, uh, uh, both of those. I promise you, short, sweet, and simple. Um, then we have the Easter egg hunt that's coming up on Saturday and the potluck that follows. So come and join us for that. And then on Easter Sunday morning, five opportunities for you to come. Six, eight, nine, eleven, and eleven oh five. So there's wonderful ways for you to do this. So obviously six o'clock is our Easter vigil. Starts in the darkness, we move into the church. And so following that tradition and that long-standing tradition of, of coming into the light and all the things of that. So come and join us for any and all parts of this. I truly believe to, to experience the joy and the celebration of Easter, you have to walk Holy Week. We have to stay on that roller coaster that we started this past Sunday on Palm Passion Sunday. So join us for any and all that you can. And Thank, thank, thank you to those who've put all this all together, uh, all the volunteers who make all this happen this entire week. We all work together to make it happen. So thank you to everyone who's participating. Walk in love. It's Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
two things this evening to remind you. All persons are welcome to receive at this altar. And at the end of this Eucharist, we will dismiss ourselves. We will go out into the great hall for our agape meal. And then after about 20 minutes, come back in and we will do the stripping of the altar. So all are invited to participate in all of that. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be this body of Christ, that may be the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ have taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
saying the post-communion prayer together, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of our passion. Grant us so to revisit the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption for you alive and reign now and forever. Amen.